Hello, Smeraldo. Welcome to nice Tea to with Elsa. Thank you for joining. How have you been? Thanks for inviting me. I'm pretty good. I've uh, been running a little bit last days because I moved country, but uh, I've been doing that so many times that, uh, I don't know, it feels kind of, uh, you know, quite easy already. So, yeah, pretty yeah. good. So um, I was going to just just to give everyone a quick introduction. Um, you can correct me if I say anything wrong, but you are a, a uni dropout who has their own startup company, but you're moving now to Poland with your missus um, because of her TikTok career. Uh, is that correct? <laughs> yeah, that, that's pretty fun, right? Uh, I, I am a startup founder and uh, we are already, well, we are still in early stage, but we're already about 30 people working in the company. So it's, uh, it's a serious thing. Uh, but in the meantime, I'm also on TikTok with my, with my girlfriend. It started like a joke, but now it's, it's actually making money. She's making advertising and everything. And be, being in Poland, where we actually have the audience, uh, it makes it much easier to execute a lot of stuff. So, yeah, we, we moved here. And, uh, uh, yeah, no, not because of the weather, obviously. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. Maybe we should have had your girlfriend on as a guest as well. She could have told us everything about uh, TikTok marketing and all that good stuff. But nonetheless... We can arrange another one, for sure. <laughs> Nonetheless, it's still good to have you on. Um, we've obviously caught up before. We had a very, very interesting chat. Um, and from my end, it would have been a shame for people not to hear the, the, the conversations we were having. Um, but I guess to kind of just kick things off, something I found interesting, more so um, around that, that uni dropout aspect. But it'd be good to kind of go from an introduction to yourself, because you were originally based in Italy, correct? So what was that like? studying in Italy to then figuring out you don't want to go to uni to then being like I want to do this other thing by myself to then now in a position where you're talking to investors and and you're looking to scale up the business what has that process been like what is the the journey from beginning to, to where you are now well uh, I am uh, the son of an immigrant first of all in Italy so I'm not Italian originally and I think this is a big strength and uh, since I was really little I always decided to do to build something mine it was something in my nature and uh, I've been looking for that I mean since I I, I started that to, to have the age for for doing something legally uh, I mean so I, I founded my first company when I was just 22 I make a lot of disasters I had that obviously I didn't have the experience but uh, making these mistakes gave me a little bit of experience and uh, of course I had been struggling a lot um, it was super hard it's not for everybody because you know many people get get, uh, get very stressed about problems and uh, uncertainty in general but uh, if you if you like this kind of game uh, I mean uh, it can be very very cool and you can change completely the way that you see the world and you know it's uh it's really uh you can learn really so much so well i i started uh, as an entrepreneur very young then i ended up working in a bank then i ended up liking uh, travel so i started to travel and to live as a digital nomad in the in the last few years i've been living in a lot of different countries i've been visiting uh, visiting about 40 countries in my life so i've been traveling a lot and uh, yeah, my last experience is actually a, a travel company, obviously, because I was really related to that market. And now uh, we, we are about, uh, yeah, 30 people working in the project and uh, with about uh, $3.5 million investments. Uh, so it's still early stage for a startup compared to, you know, a lot of companies that make big things in this world. But yeah, it's, it's a beginning of, a, I hope, a very long and interesting path. Yeah, very, very interesting. Um, it's, it's always interesting because, uh, you know, from working in the bank, so you went from having a direct job um, to then just shifting completely to, to doing something yourself. What was it? Was it something at the job that made you be like, you know what, now nah, I can't be asked to do this? Or was it more of the sense of like, actually, I could make more money from doing it myself? Was it more frustration or was it more idea? Which one was interesting it? Question. There's always two, right? Yeah, that's an interesting question. But being honest, it's, it has never, never been about money. I mean, I, I don't say that I don't care about money. Obviously, I mean, I think that money is not important, but it can affect everything that is important in your lives, your, your health, uh, the food that you eat, uh, the lifestyle that you have. So it's important. But I, I didn't do nothing for, for money itself because I was able to earn more. I actually had a very good position in the bank because I, I entered as an entrepreneur in the beginning. I had my own startup that was basically integrated in this uh, project of this bank. So I had a very good position. I was doing pretty good, good things and, and big things because it, it 
I had really big budget of marketing for doing, you know, uh, very interesting stuff. Uh, the only reason why I decided to, to leave that adventure is that uh, I, I see my life in kind of steps uh, and I have a natural uh, impulse uh, to try to always see at the big picture and say, I mean, is this my path or I should uh, try more? like make something a bit harder and a bit harder. It's, it's coming naturally to me. And uh, what happened is that uh, while, I, while I was developing this project in the bank, I had a simple idea, which is very similar to what I'm doing right now. And in the beginning, I was working for the, that bank, which uh, it's a really cool bank in Italy, very innovative and with a lot of cool people uh, inside. So actually I tried to build that inside the bank, uh, but it wasn't really in the scope of, of, of the bank at that, at that time. So um, it was basically impossible. And the reason why I left is because I couldn't do that inside. That, that's simple as that, you know? I, I say, I really want to do this. So if they're not allowing me to do that, I will do it in another way. So I quit and I started. And it was super hard because I didn't have any entrance for one year. So and I wasn't like, you know, 20 years old living with my parents. I was traveling the world in the meantime. So uh, it, it was hard. It was hard. Uh, and, and then, you know, you know as a, every, every startup, uh, I, I found investors. And then, uh, yeah, now I have a salary again. So I, I can build what I'm doing, uh, focusing on that without worrying too much. Yeah. No, it's, it's interesting that you went from, uh, you know, them not letting you or there being a restriction within the business to not pursue what you wanted to then you just deciding you know what i'll do it myself because you know this is what i want to focus on um you know to develop for, for my career um when you mentioned that you know you're now in the uh you're in the scale-up stage of your business um and for those listening that sorry that was... I, I i got interrupted a couple of times because of the connection i think Oh, no worries. Um, no, I was just saying, um, now we're, when we're talking about uh, the scale up of um, your, your business, you mentioned that, you know, you, you, you're, you've been talking to in, investors, you're now back on salary. Um, what was the beginning start? Because I'm sure it wasn't easy to kind of just get investors. Uh, I don't invested. hear you. <laughs> you still can't hear me. Can you hear me now? Hello? So weird. And you're back. I don't know what happened. Yeah, I'm not sure. I think um, because you 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 were just like freezing. Um, but my internet was was completely fine. So. I'm not sure, but we'll maybe it was mine for some reason. That's strange. It, normally it works very well. So I don't know. Yeah, no, that's fine. Um, we'll go back. Um, which bit did you not hear? Or just, um, I think after, after my, after my answer, uh, why I, um, developed this project and I went away from the bank, you made the question. I couldn't hear that question. Got it. Perfect. Um, the question was um, what I wanted to know and what I think would be interesting uh, to kind of delve into in this conversation, um, especially with yourself, because you are now working with investors. You're now uh, you've got to get people to trust to invest in your company. In the beginning, that must have been very hard for you. Right. Um, but you must have also had some uh, leverage with the connections you were making at the bank. You get to learn more about that beginning stage of what did you do to invest let's say the first million uh, what was that process like everything that you do in life normally uh, it's not just what you're doing this moment uh, it's what you have done in the past so if you're thinking to make your own project you have to make sure that you build the right connections uh, first and of course uh, working in a bank uh, uh, i had a lot of connections of people that could invest as business angels obviously not uh, million euros but uh, the money that uh, it's making a company able to to bootstrap the first the first uh, stage at least you know um, so basically really it's about uh, it's about connection this is exactly what I did and the most important thing is that uh, 
you don't have just to to go and say i have this idea and this is the presentation you have to you know to do your homework first you know you have to be convinced convinced about what you're doing uh, have built already something you know in the end it's pretty fun because uh, uh, i got the first million with a presentation but actually i didn't arrive there with a the presentation before that uh, experience uh, i got uh, the first 75k from other investors, which were the friends of these, uh, these ones that invested the one million, but I didn't there go there with a presentation to them. I went there with a prototype built by myself. So that's the point, you know? And of course, the trust uh, that uh, these people that invested one million, uh, that they had in, in these three investors, it was, uh, uh, let me say, what I needed to start the project in this way, obviously, you know, but I, I didn't start uh, basically just telling my project. I did something, I got the first trust, uh, and they brought other people that trust them to listen to me, which I had for them a cool idea. So it's really about network, but also it's, it's about uh, doing your homework, taking your own risk. Uh, and I think it's very important, like psychologically to take your own risk. No one would risk for you if you don't risk for yourself first, you know? No, that's that's a very, very good point. They need to see you risk something to see that it's worthwhile. Otherwise, it feels like, why am I putting my capital at risk uh, when 100%. this person is going to leverage all my risk to benefit themselves? No, that, that's that's really interesting. So like for someone who is looking to, you know, they have that business idea, you would, what's, what sort of advice in terms of what, what risk are we talking that they should take? Is it financial risk from their end or what, what, what is that risk that you took? to to show to the well, um, I, I think it's not a real risk i mean financial risk obviously it's uh, it's big and it's uh, clear so i mean if you have money to invest in your own project uh, obviously it's your it's your you know business card to investors because you're already investing so it's uh, a much better way to go in front of investors if you don't have money and it happened to a lot of people i didn't have so much money i mean i didn't work for one year so i had to keep the money that i had for basically living instead of investing i invested really you know not, not so much compared with what, what, what they're investing right now um it's not about uh, the risk itself but it's really putting the effort you know even if you're working you're working in a company seven eight hours per day you can actually bootstrap uh, a startup you can really do it you can really you know, learn how to develop a landing page and to make the first marketing campaign, uh, even if it's everything fake, uh, just to see the conversions and say people thank you for clicking on the ad, you know. The reality is that you you, you can't wait for investors. You have to you have to start. And then it will arrive at the point in which uh, for growing what you're doing, you will need investors maybe or maybe to make revenue since the beginning. You can, you can bootstrap. Actually, there is a lot of startups that started like this. Uh, but the point is that investors are a consequence of your effort when actually their money would be like, uh, let me say, um, a fuel to make it bigger, making possible them, for them to earn, you know? It's not about how cool is the idea. It's uh, really much easier than that. Uh, these people have money to invest in something that can be risky, but that, that can give them big returns, you know? And uh, earlier is the stage of the startup, higher is the risk. So you have to, to push forward this stage and to be in a point in which you don't have just uh, your words or a text written or a you know, presentation uh, or even a landing page. Because the reality is that now with the tools that you can find online, you can actually build your, build your first platform, first version of the platform by no code. And you can actually do it. You can dedicate six months of your life, you know, like your free time we actually have 24 hours a day which is a lot you know you can really build this first and it's funny right because when i went to the first investors my platform was actually working making actually revenues you know it was possible to buy the trips from from my platform and i did it while i was also working in the bank you know in the evening in the lunch time i was dedicating my time to that so uh, I think it's really about uh, doing the homework, uh, showing that you are willing to take risk for yourself uh, and also to leave what you're doing because no one would invest in you if you have another job. You have to be committed to that 100%. It's really about commit and com commitment. You're Albanian. We're all Albanian here. Education is very, very important for our family members. Um, and making the decision to, to, to drop out of uni, um, I can imagine uh, what it must have been like, but it would be good to hear your process of making the decision because it's not a small decision to make it is a, a big decision to see yourself and say you know what I think I can do much better 
without going to uni. So what was the, what was that like? What was it going from? What made you make the decision? And then I think the one the one bit that everyone wants to know is what did your parents say? And how many beatings did you get from them? <laughs> well, uh, see, seen from this perspective, it looks like a, a moment in which you decide that you make like a courageous uh, attempt uh, to, to be an entrepreneur in your life. Uh, it wasn't exactly so defined, you know. Of course, my parents were super upset when they realized that I wasn't going anymore to university. But the point is that they weren't paying for that. So I, I didn't have, you know, the, any, I, I didn't feel that I had to do it because they were spending money for that. It was my decision, their decision. So, I mean, I'm adult, I'm going, I'm working, I'm doing my stuff. I will do a university eventually. I, I started to do university. The point is that I realized that uh, I was, uh, first of all, very bad student. I mean, there is nothing cool about that. I was a bad student. I didn't want to stay on the books. I was actually staying on the books, but not on the right books. My attention was driven by other stuff, not, not what was the subject that I had the exam, you know, in the, in the following months. So I wasn't really able to, to commit to that kind of path. And uh, at the second year, I, I, I was already working in that, at that time as a barman, so not making so much money. And it was super big effort, you, you know. I just wanted to improve a little bit my life. So I was thinking about what I could do differently. And I thought about uh, um, a web agency because I was very passionate about that since like many years. I, I developed my first program when I was 11 years old and I never monetized that, you know? So I, I say, let, 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 let's try to do something that I, I, I like, you know? And, uh, you know, with friends known at the bar, we founded the first marketing agency and, uh, I just realized that I didn't have time for university anymore, you know, and it was just happening, you know, till one, at one point I say, oh my God, I'm super late, w what I would do. I just told my parents that I'm doing this other stuff and uh, that is going pretty well because in the beginning it was going pretty well, you know, but then what happened is that uh, it didn't well uh, go, go so good, you know, and I started to have debts, I started to have problems, to have to work uh, in the agency and also in the bar to, to make, uh, you know, possible to, to survive, you know, so my parents were super upset, really upset. I think my father didn't talk to me for about six months or something. No <laughs> yeah, it was pretty fun. Yeah. Just something like of, this. Something. Yeah. It, it is yeah. funny because if they see you doing well, then they're very happy. But as soon as something goes wrong, they're like, I told you, I told you, told you you shouldn't have done X, Y, Z. Um, but no, f fair enough. But things things are going really well with Binku now. Um, I mean, to kind of just uh, pivot again, uh, and something that, that I want to talk about is, is um, I guess, creating a community within your business because obviously you're 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 a startup and one of the most powerful things to do is when you are a startup especially with what you're doing which is travel based getting people onto the onto the um, app the web page uh, and whatnot is kind of creating uh, a community around that um, and we talked about it a lot previously off camera but be good to to dissect into why you focus on the travel community and what the goal is for Binku to I guess expand in the next few years thing well uh, a community for like uh, the nowadays business is, is the most valuable thing that you can have in general uh, building a community you don't need investment you don't need nothing of that uh, you just need to talk to people and involve them create momentum around your idea and uh, that was happen uh, that, that that is exactly what what happened uh, in uh, in our case we we started we started to speak with creators travel creators uh, to to show them that we're building a product for them and actually it's really about care, you know, because you know the problems about these people. They're on platforms uh, like uh, Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube, where they compete with a lot of other kind of creators making really, uh, let me pa pass me the term, really bad content, uh, but that is, which is funny, you know? So they are actually fighting with the engagement that this content is, uh, is creating when actually what they bring is value, something different, right? Uh, something, uh, I think, more noble, more... Uh, even useful, right? But the point is that uh, with these platforms, they get the customer at the wrong momentum, at the wrong time, because the, par the person watching things on TikTok or on Instagram is looking for pure entertainment. Entertainment is not yeah. looking for that, you know? You can actually be a travel vlogger and have a lot of following on YouTube. There is a lot of uh, guys that uh, make stunning content, uh, stunning views and earning a lot of money, you know? But it's not 
so much as, as it should be for me, you know? So what we decided to do is uh, cut off uh, all these people from these platforms. I mean, they can keep being this platform, but saying to them, we have a new platform for you where people, the momentum that people uh, is going in that platform is because they are actually starting to look for something, you know? So your type of content, your type of advice is gonna make a lot of difference. Uh, and they went crazy for that because they would love to live and to earn from their content and to make it as a first time job, you know? I mean, a lot, like 90% of people starting doing travel videos want to, to, to live uh, doing travel videos, but it's uh, just super hard uh, in the other, in the other platform. So, well, technically you are able to build a community, but in general also to create a great product when you really care about solving a problem. When you see a problem and you want to, to, to solve that for, for the people that have this problem, they're gonna be with you. That, that's really the, the point. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's, 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 yeah, very um, interesting thing to solve, especially with uh, TikTok and Instagram, which is, like you said, it is true. It is very much like quick entertainment um, based. And for the people who do put on a little bit more hard work, uh, and when I say hard work, you know, like you said, noble, because it's, um, they're taking time, craftsmanship to develop a nice video, to put insightful, um, tips and tricks to traveling to this location instead of just like copying it from wikipedia and putting like a basic tune on just to to beat the algorithm so it, it does make sense and i guess with that with that community um that you are now like in conversation with how, what what evolution do you see with that community um because now they're in a, in a position where they can um go forward with that their art form what is the the what evolution do you see? Because you're you're also now competing with the likes of, in a weird way, you're competing with like an Instagram and a TikTok. Maybe not so much, but you're kind of like riding the the back of them and also competing with them. So, where where do you see the evolution of of this going? Is it more more users coming to 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 Binku, or is it just becoming a different thing in in itself? It's interesting. It's an interesting question. Obviously, if I had all the answers, uh, I I would probably build a billion dollar company. I hope I hope the answers that we have are the right ones. Uh, but uh, yeah, consider that right now we just launched. It it was uh, we, we we had the first launch about a month ago in beta version, so not even complete platform, right? Uh, and we already have about uh, five hundred creators and seven thousand five hundred people using uh, using the app, and uh, that's pretty interesting at the super. Early early stage of a launch uh, also because we just use the two percent of our capacities of marketing and budget we we have uh currently with the funding that we have and the, with the creator working with us are you still with me because i see you blocked yeah yeah no okay. i'm still with you yeah, yeah. okay great um so what i think is that uh our goal is to give to creators uh, the tools uh, to connect better with their audience uh, from a travel experience. So being making them able to, to share their travel experience in the best way. On the other hand, the problem that we solve to, to users uh, is that uh, is actually finally having a platform where the main point is not the entertainment, uh, but is actually finding what actually you're looking for. Imagine that uh, you go to Instagram or to TikTok uh, and you have a feed of content just going, right? And you, you can just change it by searching, right? Otherwise, it's what they give to you to keep you on the platform. In our case, uh, we ha have a, a feed as well, but this feed, it has a logic. For example, you can actually filter per country, filter per specific place, filter per specific restaurant and see all the videos about that restaurant or say to the platform, I want to see uh, vegan friendly restaurants in London and with a lot of other kind of uh, adapt to big group of people. I don't know, you know, so what we're actually bringing together is uh, the uh, capacity of multi-filtering of uh, platforms that normally are not video. For example, uh, TripAdvisor, you can actually multi-filter. Booking.com, you can multi-filter. Yeah. But what you have a result, uh, it's what they manage as a content, what they actually sell, right? We're not selling this content. It's content built from the community to help other people having a good experience. This is the main you know, difference from, uh, from uh, these kind of platforms. We, we are actually not uh, suggesting you hotels uh, uh, with, with reviews and stuff like this just to sell the hotel. I mean, it's the experience of someone you know, that you actually trust because you see how this person is traveling. You can follow the same path or you can take his advice, 
the advice of someone else and someone else and bring it together and build your own uh, itinerary. Well, where we will go, Ooh, it's, it's, uh, it's hard to say because uh, our vision, uh, uh, well, we have a pretty big vision of uh, closing up the environment and making possible not just to see videos uh, and uh, plan a trip uh, uh, and then book outside. We want also to make possible to book inside the platform, which, which is something very big from a technological point of view. But also we want to empower creators with, uh, with tools uh, running on the, on the blockchain, giving them uh, their fun token, making possible for creators to become like little startups and saying, hey, I want to be one of the first one going to the Antarctic. You can actually finance my, my, my trip. And uh, if uh, this video is uh, working a lot on the platform, and so we are rewarding this video with, uh, with our token, uh, the token of the creator will actually go up as a, as a company, if you think about it. No? So people that have this creator to start this journey will actually earn with them or will be in the, you know, uh, let me say, small community of people that he has very, very close, people that he actually speak directly with, you know, and stuff like yeah. this. So. It's pretty big. Our future, we have built just a little piece uh, that fortunately is giving us really great feedbacks. This community wants to be together. That's the most important thing. Yeah. Wait, so so going on to the, the, the was it, what did you call it? Fun token or? Yep. Fun token. Um, so in terms of token for, for crypto, blockchain, that sort of stuff. So the idea is essentially like if someone wants to go to travel to a part of the world um, and they want to build a fund to, to, to go there and people want to see that because they want to see, hey, we want to see what some cool stuff to do is it in Mongolia is they in, invest essentially to see that content. And so it kind of becomes a way of paying to see content for your own. Um, it's a different way, exactly. A different yeah. way to pay because um, subscriptions, uh, sending rewards for nothing, rewards like in TikTok, you, you actually pay people for no, not, not any reason. Yeah, it's yeah. something that uh, I think we will, it will go down because people it's starting to understand more this stuff and when they give, they want to have back. You know, it, it, you, you can actually give a reward because someone make a great video on YouTube and you understood something that you didn't before and you yeah. feel that you want to give something to that person that did this content for free and which is amazing. But uh, Having like a model in which everybody accepts as a, a, a good way, you know, to interact with creators, uh, I think it's, it's much better, especially because it gives uh, uh, flexibility, you know, it could be just not to finance my trip, you know, because some creators don't, don't need that, you know, they, they yeah. actually have the money for traveling, but uh, uh, what they need is people to stay with them and to feel involved in their life and in their trips in, in our case. Mm. So imagine I'm going to travel next month. Uh, I have uh, selected 10 destinations. The token holders will decide where, Yeah. you know? So like this, you're doing something for your community and you know that it's real, it's true. It's not that he's saying, yes, you vote, but then there is a fake system behind. It's on the blockchain there forever. And that's the yeah. point. It's there forever. You know, it's like, it's going to be a social currency one day. If you say things and you don't do them, I mean, it's there forever. Huh? You can actually build trust or lose trust by selling fake NFTs, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. And it, it fits really well with um, the whole creator economy uh, that we're seeing, especially now with digital and everything, NFTs being one of them. Um, I'm not going to give my opinions on them, but that whole thing of you can now be a creator, you can now work, have a direct connection with your um, community, with your supporters, it all fits in very nicely into which Web 3.0 is all about, which is moving away from the walled gardens, such as the YouTubes, the Facebooks, all these things, and kind of having a direct connection with your consumer. Um, and you guys kind of being the facilitators of that where people can can be in there and, and support. Is there any other cool ways that you see this sort of like, I guess, these tokens, this, this community-based web 3.0, whatever we want to call it. Um, is there any other way you see it taking place or is there any other cool well, things you think could happen? Considering considering uh, Web3 has, uh, considering the part of Web3 in which we talk about uh, community uh, engagement, uh, we are talking about community ownership in general. So what we will make possible to do actually is to evolve the platform based on the token holders. So they will be able to vote the functionalities uh, to select something if it's priority or not priority for, for our business. So it means uh, building the, the business together and uh, still it's there on the blockchain. So we have to respect what we're saying. It's a smart contract 
that, that that's the cool part um but the coolest part of all of this uh, it's uh, giving community ownership it means not just giving ownership of what we will build it means giving ownership of also what we earn you know that's the biggest thing i think in general the fact is that imagine uh we need to, to scale, right? Uh, what, what is different in our platform from TikTok or other platforms? It's uh, the uh, height categorization. I mean, our content must be categorized in a very, very good way because otherwise when you're looking the feed of Japan, looking for specific streets with uh, the trees and blah, blah, blah. Uh, if something else is appearing that feed, uh, it's a really bad experience for the user because he's looking for that. We don't want that to happen, which is happening everywhere. You, you write on Instagram hashtag and you look for that hashtag and you see first, uh, like uh, the first hundred pixels is girls uh, making selfies in that place, but you don't see the place, <laughs> number one. So it's, uh, or, or boys, I, 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 it doesn't matter, obviously. <laughs> it sounds a little bit bad like this, no? Um, but the point is that, uh, um, doing that is very hard if we had to check specifically every content from now on in the next 10 years we would become a very big company very heavy and not scalable we can't do that how can we be scalable if the community is working with us it's about crowdsourcing but on the blockchain so it's real it's like uh, you can actually see what is happening behind you have the control of that uh, you have the vision of that so as a as a uh, community member you if you see a video that has a wrong location okay it's mm. the tag the Colosseum, but it's the arena di verona for example mm. which is kind of similar but it's not the same thing right it's in different cities uh you can actually support the platform by saying hey this is this is a wrong thing here okay so our uh, reviewers we will check that content so because you did something for the platform you deserve something and if we have a tokenomy in, in, our, in our platform, it's going to be very easy to manage that. It's going to be written in the smart contract. So every action that you do for the community is giving you something, you know? Mm. So I think this is uh, really revolutionary uh, somehow, you know? But I think the blockchain, it's like, it's much wider in, in general. The way that we're using that is to involve our community, give ownership to them uh, and win with them, uh, uh, you know, this, uh, the market that we are approaching. Yeah, no, interesting, interesting uh, time to be in to talk about blockchain because it's still very early and the um, the developments you're talking about, which is essentially using blockchain to to fix problems has been used before, but then you're adding the, the essence of tokenomics with the community to kind of make it a little bit more like a one-to-one -one interaction so people feel like they're part of that community. And it's weird because we that's something, I mean, I don't want to get, into i'm no expert in crypto um but that's also something that we're seeing now with uh those blockchain games those crypto games where it's like you can now just like have a community around this one game and you can that's trade. pretty similar exactly but, but the, yeah, the reason why these games are the, the only reason why these games of blockchain are like uh, spreading so much and people is using them and earning money it's very very simple and i don't really understand why in the blockchain community this thing is not like uh, you know clear to them it's working not because game is cool of course ga gaming is cool and a lot of people is mm. playing games and it's becoming a bigger and bigger market or whatever but all the other markets are even bigger you know yeah. the, the point is that experience I mean, going on the blockchain today, going to, I don't know, PancakeSwap and buying a token of your friend that is uh, uh, launching something, it's a kind of horrible experience. You need to open MetaMask and then you need to go to Binance or somewhere to buy the token, send to MetaMask and go connect your MetaMask to PancakeSwap. And then it's, oh my God, it's like, guys, it's like, blockchain is for really tech people it doesn't really make sense what we want to do is actually simplify that completely 100 percent needs to be a seamless experience like opening a normal account anywhere opening this address obviously you will need to have uh, more documentation if you want to withdraw that money let me say because obviously mm -hmm. there is tax behind that so if you if you you know swap your your token for a fiat currency uh if you actually trade it uh, converted sorry uh you need to pay taxes on that so you will receive that you can provide to the to your country to, to to pay taxes right but the point is that the experience is horrible today and there is so much that we can do we are really not in early stage 
even more than early stage. Consider now that overall blockchain crypto market uh, in terms of market cap uh, is like the 6% of the American uh, GDP. Uh, how's it? Exactly. Yeah. So we're talking about nothing. I mean, it can fail tomorrow. Nothing happens yeah. to the yeah. worldwide economy, right? Okay, a lot of people is losing money. That, that's true because it's still already a lot of people. But I mean, it's really, if you understand it right now, in 10, 15 years, uh, it's like, uh, it's going to be something, you know, uh, you thank yourself for understanding right now. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, you, you've kind of hit the nail on the head, which is, I think, something like my, I've always considered myself like a realist when it comes to crypto. Uh, I'm not one of those people who's like, oh my God, to the moon, to the moon, to the moon. You know, no, that, I'm a fan that's... of it, but I think there has to be realism. And one thing you hit on the head, which I think is absolutely true, is that until we figure out how to simplify it, make it easier, no one's going to like exactly. want to use it. It's too, like, even for myself, I know, like, I know how to use it, but it's like, it's way too complicated. You said a lot of like company names, MetaMask, Uniswap, to someone who knows nothing about crypto, they're like, a what? Uh, yeah yeah for sure for uh, sure you yeah. know it's way too um it's funny because it, it reminds me one of the things that crypto wants to solve is or one of the reasons it started is like the issues it had with the financial institutions of making it harder for normal people and in reality right now it's making it harder for normal people because it's complicated but it's, a, it's a different it's a different hard the, yeah, no, obviously, say, it's different it's type of hard. hard. It's, it's technical hard, not uh, not because you don't have the documentation, because you live in a specific place yeah. in uh, I don't know where, and you actually can trust institutions there. So they yeah. or they don't open the account for you. The point is really, it's really that uh, it's really uh, uh, crypto in general. Blockchain is a habilitator. Just to make you a simple example, um, for having market makers in our world, uh, we need to have a big certification. If you want to build a bank, uh, why you hazard are not building a bank? Because you need a lot of money for doing that. First of all, because the legal is saying that uh, I think about forty million or something in, in the UK, um, and then you need to provide a lot of stuff right uh, to to make sure that to the system that you actually the right person for for creating something like this uh, and yeah it's super it's not accessible so you you can actually from uh, let me say a transactional point of view okay you can't earn money from transactions right now today because you can't create a bank right mm. okay if you go to pancake swap okay and you have two basically two main things. One is exchange, uh, so trade, uh, so you can trade the swap tokens. Uh, you know, you have Ethereum, you want Bitcoin, so you, you just you know make, make these swaps. Uh, and the second thing is uh, liquidity pools. And uh, liquidity pools mm -hmm. are working li like banks. So uh, it means providing liquidity for the people that want to trade a pair of coins. So there is people that is trading uh, all the time Ethereum and, and Bitcoin to make uh, to earn. Okay, obviously we need money. I, I, I'm simplifying that. Uh, it's now these pools are enormous, obviously because it's the biggest part of the blockchain. But let's use these names. Uh, these pairs they, they 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 need liquidity behind, obviously, you know, because uh, it's not going to be possible to actually trade them. You know, so. People that is adding liquidity, obviously, to, to, to these pools, uh, they are the market makers. They are po making possible to this market uh, to exist. Uh, so for market, we uh, mean uh, people that is actually trading something, right? Um, if you actually put money there, okay, in, in the currency that uh, is uh, made uh, of the pairs or, or more currency in that pool, uh, you have a percentage which is, I don't know, if the percentage is 0-10% uh, of every transaction, you have the 0-10% of every transaction happening, of course, in percentage of your, the liquidity that you put in that liquidity pool. If uh, we have a liquidity pool together in which I put 50% and you put 50%, you're going to earn a 0 0 I'm going to earn the 0 0 for every trade, right? Yeah. So, and you can actually go and, and do it right now. Open the MetaMask account, connect your Ethereum's, uh, and just do that like super fast, right? Uh, and this is a big habilitator. The problem is the, 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 the technical part behind, obviously, you know. Someone is trying to simplify it because if you go uh, in the Cosmos uh, uh, blockchain uh, universe, uh, things are more like with a beautiful user experience, just take uh, Osmosis, mm. for example, which is the, the pancake swap for, for, for the Cosmos uh, uh, blockchain. It's much more cool to see and uh, with a better experience, they explain things better and stuff like this. But the problem is that all of this, uh, it is being created by 
developers. Like all the developers that understood what was blockchain, they jumped on that and they started to build it. So mm. it's really still a, a developer mindset, uh, you know, environment, but it won't be. And uh, it will arrive people that uh, finally understand that because I took years, you know, <laughs> I bought my first Bitcoin in 20, 2015 and I sold it because I was losing money. I was what the hell is that? You know? <laughs> now you're like... <laughs> yeah no, don't say me that <laughs> yeah yeah you're there like so, yeah. i mean at least it's going down now so you must be like okay at least. <laughs> <laughs> you don't feel that guilty but yeah no it's it's it is exactly and you, so you put on a really good point which is that it is being um led by developers at the moment hence why the culture and the themes around it are developer code heavy complicated because that is the way their environment and their exactly. way operate. and it, it, it does go back to the question of when the um internet or when computing was first came to the stage because it was developed exactly. by those people to a normal person it was like well this is way too complicated it was only until it you know the likes of you know i think the likes of like steve jobs and people who made it very simplified for people and it was like okay now i get this it makes sense i can use xyz and if i want to learn more i can learn more so until that happens we're still in the early stage of of crypto exactly exactly and the early stage you know what is it it's uh, uh just the really technical people understanding something so, so who is the people that is able to put their money and build that is the only people really understanding what is behind yeah. and then there is the scammers they will oh. always be there first <laughs> everywhere everywhere and it's yeah. it's it's a shame because i think like I think there's also misconceptions um, with NFTs as well. Uh, loads of people think they're buying the artwork when in reality you're not buying the artwork, you're buying the link that facilitates that artwork. So if OpenSea shuts down, you no longer own it. And so, and people get sold the dream. Um, and, you know, those sort of things, the, 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 the misinformation that we sell about crypto well, will only do it damage well the the, the point is that uh, for sure if open c is closing down you don't see open c anymore fortunately the transactions are re recorded I, I guess on ethereum and polygon yeah, i yeah. think so they're not gonna disappear obviously so you will have your record saying exactly what was saying the smart contract the point is uh, the the utility that we're giving to them uh, it's uh I think really like 98% of people didn't really understand what, what's the point of that. I mean, we, we don't have still uh, uh, real, uh, um, let me say, good uses cases from this point of view. It's mm. really, if you, if, you, if you think about, you know, you can, yeah, buy an image of something because it's giving you the grant to a specific community and stuff like this, but come on. I mean, it's, it's like, you know, it's, it must be not the best way to, to use it. There is a Mark Cuban actually that uh, proposed a very interesting uh, user case. It was about the Harvard professors that they were forced every year to write a new book, which was going to be the book that people need to, to buy to, 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 yeah. to go to his lessons because otherwise people would sell the book uh, to each other and he couldn't earn any more from that, obviously, you know? So um, uh, he was forcing students and he was forced to build a book every year, even if it wasn't necessary, because actually for some stuff is not necessary. I mean, math is math. Yeah. I understand if you make a book of blockchain, which is tomorrow, it's, it's really old, Different but, thing. uh, uh, you know, some stuff are, you know, our base of, of the nature. So they, they will be like this for at least five years, you know? So he proposed to, to sell these books uh, like NFTs. So they're going to be digital, obviously, not, not physical. So the point is that when you own that NFT, that book, you can actually sell it to someone else. But uh, the, the first creator, so the professor, he will have his money anyway. So that's a very good way uh, to, to use it. But the point is really try to, to, to translate it to the real world, you know? I, I'm, not, I'm not really interested right now in NFTs in general. I'm interested in more in the... I think the coolest thing that crypto can do, it's uh, empower founders to create startups in a completely different way. Mm -hmm. Not in the way that I'm creating right now, because I started as a not crypto company and now we are giving community ownership uh, as a second step, uh, which happened to a lot of actually companies. But uh, if you start as a community first startup, 
just, just imagine that. I, I'm not Smeraldo. I, I don't uh, own uh, Blinku and I'm, I'm, I'm anyone. But you know me and I, you know that I'm a cool guy. I understand some stuff about cryptos and startups, right? And I say to you, uh, hey, man, uh, I'm starting a new project. Uh, I would like to have you on board, uh, maybe as a member, team member, or maybe just part of the community. You will see. It doesn't matter. I'm doing an airdrop in the beginning, which is like uh, the marketing campaign. So I'm sending for free the token. And you will see on your MetaMask account uh, next to your Bitcoins and Ethereum also the crypto name of what I sent you, which is not liquid uh, till we put it in a liquidity pool, obviously, you know, but it's next to your money. You know, it's exactly in a, like in your bank account. Okay. It doesn't exist, this company, but it's in the blockchain. It's forever. And your coin, it's in your wallet. How, how does it feel that? Are you going to listen to me when I'm saying to you, hey, I'm doing an event about my coin. Are you going to participate? Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're getting That's people involved different... straight away. Yeah. It's, it's almost like, I think my bit, it's almost like you can, as an entrepreneur, you can use it as a way to test your business to uh, so essentially like in a weird way, like get the crowd. You know how we have Kickstarter? We see how many people, you, it's 100%. similar to that. We could just do it like that. We're voting blockchain, seeing how many people turn up. But another thing that I just want to say on top of that, which I think that is very useful for entrepreneurs and businesses because they help the economy. Anything that helps the economy is going to become prevalent. You know, it's going to stick. But the other thing I think right now what we're seeing is because we do get a little bit of that. You know how people now create coins and they get people to join. But a lot of those coins aren't created to solve a problem. They're created to just make money. And that is... But it's very easy to verify that. It's very easy. It's just about the economics. I mean, you can actually, uh, if you want to know if someone is want to scam you or not, uh, once you have the liquidity pool built and everything, you just see in uh, the guy that sent you the, um, the, mm. the, the airdrop and stuff like this, or ask you to invest or to trade it or to put money in the liquidity pool, how much coins or tokens he still has in, in his account. Because the point is that uh, if he's a serious person, he's going to lock them or he's going to distribute them to the community. You know, mm. building a, a proper economics in the beginning is the way that you show to investors, even friends, uh, that it's going to be a safe thing. Not that people is putting money and I have the majority of tokens, so I'm going there trading them and ciao, hasta luego. And uh, I am in uh, Costa Rica, you know? No, yeah. uh, it's like... It's like it can happen, but just because people didn't understand how it works, you know, you, you can really by learning how uh, people is protecting from, from these kind of things, uh, learn how to protect yourself and to evaluate a project if it's good or not. First, you need to like the idea because it's related with what I mean, something is not cool because it's crypto. Crypto is just a tool, you know, it's mm. a more marketing tool somehow than, than a technical tool, even if it's very technical, because the marketing thing is that you have something like in a place in which which can be changed with a logo with a name and it's yours you know so it's mm. i think it's more marketing but then you need to like the project to know the person if you don't know the person know the economics that's the the, the rules obviously and yeah. uh, now we need to do it by horrible search uh, in uh, you know all these uh, you know blocks uh, explorers but one day we will have like uh, as we have credit rating we will have coin rating you know it's very easy just you know put the put the, na the name of the token everything is on the blockchain is like open so you can build a tool that is saying this guy will escape very probably because he mm. still have all the token and he didn't lock it he didn't do nothing you know right so yeah. i think it's it, it's just it, it will come it will it will take yeah. time but it will come yeah it's almost as if because it is interesting because like you said everything's there like it's transparent in the sense like everything's on the blockchain you can see if people are lying to you but because that technical side of stuff is still not simplified for the normal person they miss out on that and that's where people mainly get scammed so that's why it's it's interesting because you're absolutely right if you want to see if someone's scamming you you can very easily see you look at their white, white paper the website who they're invested you know who's investing in them background checks very simple stuff, but then you can also look at, um, like you said, the airdrops, what that code is saying, um, what that contract has on it. But when you get it to the person and you tell them, hey, you've got to check the contract and it's like a bunch of code and they're like, oh, what the? Uh. <laughs> it's like, it's a lot. So I think once that gets simplified, I think then it's very hard for people, 
people are going to take less risks to scam people essentially and they're going to it's going to be much better for entrepreneurs because they're going to trust the system more they're going to invest in it more and if they can get rewarded like you said in terms of like the tokenomics building their business around it they're going to put more time onto it and again with everything as long as there's trade whatever that trade is as long as there's trade and it keeps expanding then it'll always be there so you're right it will take time we're still at the beginning of things but i think because it's right now it's such a marketing word it's just being thrown around everywhere and that's where people get tripped up but no that's that's so interesting so with uh blinku you guys are now entering into uh using tokenomics and and expanding in that um did you have to hire people specific for that to 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 like developers in in creating a tokenomic um how was that that side of stuff um especially as you already put your business and then you're adding consider that we we actually are, are still in the analysis phase so we didn't still build uh, we didn't you know write any code related Got to it. that uh, we are understanding what to do how to do it with which technologies if to be uh, you know a, a blockchain running on on cosmos for example building our own blockchain or if using a, a blockchain that um, is providing us some stuff so we don't have to do it uh, you know uh, by our own by paying land commissions so it's a lot of stuff to if you want to do uh, a, pro- a serious project at our stage it's a really big project it's not something very very small we, it's small to create your own coin on your own token it's very easy and there is actually no code platform that is making possible for anyone to do that right the point is that you need to, to understand then uh, uh, interoperability you need to understand the right environment and stuff like this so now what we're doing is that is analyzing what we're doing with um, our team because some of our team understand uh, maybe not as a blockchain developer 100% but understand uh, pretty a lot of stuff and then we are uh, connecting with people in this environment the cool thing is that uh, a lot of these developers or people working these projects they are totally open to listen to you and uh, sometimes they're even able to you know decide to help you without getting paid just in exchange of the token because they really believe in the project you know there is Mm -hmm. venture capital now investing on your token instead of buying the shares of your company and even there is a venture crypto venture capitalists that they are willing to swap their token with yours uh, even if yours is still like uh, with a very small market cap and theirs is really big so you can actually use the liquidity to build the project because they think that your token will work so um what we're doing is actually connecting with the community of you know these people and then we will for sure have our own team uh, of, of blockchain development especially if it's gonna become uh, our own blockchain yeah yeah that's so so interesting when you're just talking about it it's like a new world just is being built uh, on top of stuff it's super fast it's like a it's few super years fast, ago, but it, it brings me on to like the interesting um topic uh and i'm glad we kind of got onto this um because it is very interesting and people are interested because it is still new um but like web 3.0 to me that is still new and people think from my perspective the metaverse is right now nothing's being built it's still very new we're still tampering with it we're still testing it out i'm sure you've seen uh some of the other places testing out but there's nothing concrete yet but it's interesting that things are just being built like with with the foundation um where do you see that going with do you see that as well happening, like with Blinku getting involved in quote unquote the metaverse? Because I it's weird saying the metaverse because it's it's a phrase, it's a word, it's not, you know, each company will have their own version of it, you know. Um, I'm also saying this as someone who does not know much about the metaverse, so keep that in mind. But where do you see that playing a big role in the future as well? Well, uh, first of all, we, we need to consider that the metaverse is not just uh, necessarily, uh, you know, a 3D environment in which we enter with uh, with the Oculus, you know. The point is mm-hmm. that for metaverse, we, we mean, uh, you know, a reality that is built up from us, uh, that is like we want uh, with uh, the things that we want. And uh, if you think about that, what we are doing right now, we were speaking like being the same room, but we are not, you know. It's not mm-hmm. so different from the metaverse itself. Then it's just about improving uh, the improvement of the technology but the reality is that we are already living uh, since uh, 2010 in the metaverse because we spent 
10 slash 12 hours on, in front of screens. The only thing that's going to change is maybe it's going to be the experience, the technology, the, the hardware that we will have for doing that. But the reality is that uh, metaverse is not coming. It's already here and it will just improve the experience. It will be more and more attractive. And some people will not be even able to go out from there because it's going to be much you know, cooler than the normal reality. And this is scary somehow, you know? Yeah. Um, I got some well, Blade Runner, I got some Blade Runner dystopian vibes <laughs> just when you said that. People don't <laughs> want to leave the house. <laughs> exactly. That's, that's, uh, I, I think we, uh, as, a, as a race, we have to be very careful with what we're doing. Uh, but the point is that uh, every person is uh, accountable of his own destiny and his own life. So as you get addicted by using Instagram and you need to go to psychologists because you are watching girls uh, and boys that are perfect and uh, with amazing life and you feel bad, uh, the same stuff uh, with the metaverse, the same stuff with, with, uh, with other things. So it's really, it's related with our personal evolution. You know, we can use the metaverse uh, and be involved and having fun with that, playing football with our friends on the metaverse. Mm. Uh, and we can still have a normal life and then enjoy walking on a park. You know, why shouldn't be like this? The point is that uh, maybe, uh, I, I try to see it in a very romantic way, maybe we will, we will get less bored in our lives. Because we, we spend so much time basically getting bored and scrolling in the feed of the social media, which is like making losing our time, you know. Mm, but then still, it depends really on the, the people. I mean, the, the metaverse will be a proxy to go anywhere to do anything. But what you do, <laughs> it's your decision. That's the it, point, you know. It's very nice. No, you, you've, you've explained it really, really well, especially for someone like myself, who's still very new to that. And I think even the people listening will now understand it a lot better. So... And it's really well explained. But the other thing as well that I was going to bring up, which is funny because it, it goes back to when you're given freedom, you know, you're given freedom to do what you want. It's really up to you how you do it. Um, and it's, it's funny because as well, when you look back at social media, um, Instagram, Facebook, whatever you want to call it, there's, there's always, there's always um, two sides to the coin. It's, loads of people say it's bad, it's bad, it's bad. And I will agree to an extent. You know, if you look at as someone who, as myself, who works in advertising, when you know how these algorithm works, you can see the extent of where the bad comes from. But at the same time, the good is that it connects people. It's made communities closer. It's a, you know, it, it it's um, made us borderless in a sense, you know, where borders do not matter. You do not have to be in the same location to have a conversation, to be friends, to be investment partners, that sort of stuff. So it does close that. But because this technology is moving so fast, we're not really thinking, which is kind of what you were going on about, is we're not really thinking to how will this affect um, the evolution of the human. And we should be thinking is like, how can we create it to make sure that it balances things out and it becomes more of a, a net pro rather than a net negative. There will always be bad stuff, you know, nothing's black and white, you know, like you said, there will be people on the metaverse who might just want to be at home all day <laughs> and we can't stop that. But as long as there's more of a net positive where people are using it for the right stuff, that sort of stuff, it, it will go well. But it's also weird because then you go on to the whole thing of like giving people freedom where if you just let people do what they want, it is really up to them. If you force a narrative, you know, if someone, let's say they go to the net metaverse and then the only thing you're showing is positive stuff, is that really any better, you know? So it's it's just one of those like oh. tough things that you can't. You, you can't cut off freedom, first of all, because if you cut off freedom, you actually, what you're doing, uh, it's stopping the evolution of human being. But for the simple fact that uh, not necessarily what is bad, it's really bad. You know, when, when people is doing something that they receive bad feedbacks, let me say, so they are actually unhappy and they have a lot of unlock and stuff like this. Uh, uh, it's sad, obviously it's sad. I'm very sad when I see a friend uh, being very unlucky, unlucky because of maybe his decisions, you know, I'm very sad about that. But the point is that that is necessary, you know, to, to understand, to evolve, to, to push yourself outside of your comfort zone and become the person that you actually destined to be. The point is that the world is not perfect, but we have never been so happy and healthy in the, our human history. That's the reality. 
many people is not able to accept that because maybe they don't like hundred uh, percent their life, you know, because maybe they're not going to see the good part of that. Uh, that there is no war, there is no one uh, stealing uh, in your house, uh, or I don't know, you're not starving for food and <laughs> stuff like this. You know, they don't see that, so they maybe are expecting something different. But yeah. The reality is that technology, social media, metaverse, uh, uh, they are just proxies. They are just proxies. If you are a likable and accountable person in your personal life, uh, you're going to be as well on social media and people will like you because you are a nice and likable person. That's the point. Obviously, the impact on the society can be bad. Uh, obviously, the system needs to improve, uh, but it will happen because the reality is that human being, human being is amazing. It's able to evolve compared to with any other species at a speed that is like insane in the same uh, life of the same individual. The same mm. person could, could be a real jerk and then in, and ending up being Gandhi, right? So th mm. that's beautiful of human beings. So the point is uh, we actually... There is some of us as, as a species that need to, uh, to improve the system in terms of how people start to approach this stuff. So the educational system will need to improve because we will have some people that they won't be able to, to, to face that and that will be a problem. So having a problem, we will look for a solution and we will keep evolving, you know? I, I normally suggest to people to, to, to don't worry too much about how the world is, like just make sure that the one that you are living in is, is the best one for you. And this is the best way to have the world actually. This is the, 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 the way that I see things. And it's very helpful for me to, you know, to see things like this and wake up in the morning and saying, I'm not living the bad world. I'm living the world that I, I, I'm actually deciding to live with my own impact. So yeah, it's helpful. Yeah, it is, it's, a, it's a very good point where you're talking about um, as long as you can be a good person, to yourself live the good life naturally just the way things work whatever you want to call it whatever whichever law positive ha things happen and people around you it just they all connect they just you know it all fits in um and you're right as well i think it is a bit of a an i think a lot of people don't want to look in the mirror sometimes and admit that things aren't going well and that it might be an issue of theirs and some stuff you're right some stuff you know um we're both um, albanian some stuff like you know the country you come from it is difficult and we understand that i'm sure you know you have family back home and you can see that but sometimes when i'm here in the youth I, like someone living in the uk and i see people complaining i'm like oh my god like you're living in in, a, in the uk like come on like my parents were <laughs> so happy that they're living in the uk you know so it it is perspective it is um those things and it is a little bit of soul searching to figure it out and it's funny because when it comes down to it like like what we're talking about it's like it's never about the crypto the the tech because those are proxies it's always about the fundamentals the basics do you get those right exactly. you get everything i think there is there is a, a kind of uh, like a uh, universal rule uh, that uh, defines uh, the level of evolution that you are as a person okay mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't matter where you live uh, the situation that you are but the end you can be happy or unhappy based on this uh, ev personal evolution that you have i have met people in albania during the not communism or just after because it was you know i born I, I was born in 1990 so I, I didn't see the communism but it was hard moments and i have mm -hmm. seen super happy people healthy wealthy people right in a contest like albania which was super hard but these people was, were amazing right so because they decided to be that way they, they evoluted enough you know uh, as as is uh, above it will be below uh, and the vice versa the reality is that much more it depends on yourself and how much you evolve yourself uh, than the, the the environment in general so related to where you live uh, to the environment that you have around uh, to the technologies it's really much more related to yourself than you, we, we're not passive uh, receivers of what, what is happening, you know? I mean, if we see things like this, we will be, but we, it's not necessary, yeah, to, to see things like this. Yeah, interesting, interesting world uh, that we live in, fast tech moving, got loads of opportunities to be made. Um, Smeralda, it's been amazing talking to you. It's been a pleasure. Um, I guess just last thing, I mean, tell people, uh, a little bit more about Blinku, what you guys got coming on, any plans for the future people that maybe should be looking out for, any links that you could share that should they should download the app. Um, we'd be happy to 
to put that on the podcast uh, so people can check it out. But yeah, let people know what's going on. Sure thing. Well, uh, we can link our, uh, link our website, even if it's in Italian, but it's possible to translate it with, uh, with Google Translate right now. It's a little bit technical, but, you know, uh, it's, uh, it's not super, super hard. Um, what, what, what we aim to do is to create, uh, let me say, the, uh, for the first uh, in, you know, in our decades, uh, a platform in which we uh, are trying to close up all the customer journey of people interested in traveling and experiences, you know, could be traveling the other side of the world or even finding a restaurant in your city or something cool to do in the weekend, uh, just, uh, you know, 100 kilometers by car from, from your city. It doesn't really matter that. Uh, it matters uh, your free time when you're spending doing experiences. We want to create uh, the first platform that is uh, making possible from uh, the discovery phase, uh, you know, to the actually going and living the experience phase uh, all together in one place, uh, uh, making possible for people uh, able to... Uh, share the experiences in a very engaging way to have the tools uh, to help other people making cooler things you know in their free time because that's all about uh, and even though um, it's still not possible uh, and we are working hard on that we will make possible to close up also the payment systems uh, systems uh, we will make possible even to pay by cryptos one day that's like the the the, the biggest uh, part i mean if you earn rewards from from blink and you start to have a lot of money because money like cryptos because you are helping a lot of the platform you may need to use this money not just trade them and then change them you know maybe it will be possible we will be one uh, of the platforms uh, making possible for merchants to receive uh, cryptocurrency as payments this is the long term uh, uh, goal and uh, in general, one thing that I can suggest uh, to, to anyone that th is thinking to, to start a business is just start and make everything that you can with, uh, with, with your strength, you know, learn what you need to learn, but don't, uh, don't speak to, you know, anyone till you just build up something that is visible, then you can actually think uh, to go to people and say, hey, would you use that, you know? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And some solid piece of advice, uh, get it done get it out to market, see how the market reacts and take it from there. Again, Sonado, thank you so much for taking the time. It's been a pleasure. We'll definitely have to come around Poland. I want to do some of those TikToks. I want to get TikTok famous as well, like yourself. Uh, <laughs> so we'll get that. It's, pretty, it's still pretty easy on TikTok, right? It's like, uh, you know, it's, they're pushing new creators. So you can try. I mean, you can try any kind of content right now. So I'm doing entertainment. I was having fun of the fact that creators are struggling to fight with entertainment content but i am one of the guys doing entertainment on tiktok have with yeah. million views so i really understand that problem you know <laughs> yeah yeah and that's so good so good well listen guys thank you to everyone who's been listening and supporting us as well uh go make sure you check out some other's website uh, we'll also add you've got linkedin we'll add your linkedin we'll add your socials your tiktoks Thanks. and everything in there as well so make sure you follow him um, and all that good stuff Guys, again, thank you. It was you very great much. to speak to you. It was a pleasure. Thank you very much, Alex.